Hello my beautiful planty people and how are you doing today? I hope you are doing wonderfully. I am doing well. I am feeling so much better. Uh, I would like to thank all of you guys that reached out to me on Instagram giving me your uh, tips and tricks for um, neck and head and shoulder back pain sort of thing. Um, I, I was truly stunned by the amount of people who cared enough to reach out and try to help and uh, I appreciate that so so much so please know that I am feeling better uh, so for those of you who are new here hi hello my name is Nikki this is my channel plants pots and whatnots and as always for all of my gluttons for punishment who just keep torturing yourselves by coming back for more <laughs> it is amazing to see you as always so today I decided because it has been number one a really long time since I've done a video like this and number two there has been so many new people um, hanging out with us since I did my last Q&A video and I thought we could just do a little Q&A um, and maybe some folks that don't know me as well can get to know me a little better you know that sort of thing so I asked you guys on YouTube and on Instagram to send me some questions um, I got a metric crap ton of questions, so I tried to narrow it down as much as possible. Um, I am not probably going to be able to answer all of these questions. However, um, a lot of these questions I may actually be able to just turn into um, an actual video because there was a lot of plant related questions. Um, so we're just going to go ahead and start. So I do have plant related questions and I also have more personal related questions. And you're gonna to wanna to stick around because today I have a special guest that will be joining me in a little while. So make sure you stick around for that. I'm excited. Hopefully they're excited. I'm gonna go put my cat somewhere else now. <laughs> so anyway, if that sounds like something that you'd like to stick around and watch, then please stick around and watch. And uh, let's answer some burning questions that you may or may not want answers to. Hey, you stayed around, huh? All right, so um, I also did a little poll on Instagram asking you guys what you wanted me to do while I answered these questions. I gave you a few options and also mentioned if there's anything else that you wanted to see, uh, go ahead and throw it down in the comments of um, those posts. Um, and always, if there's anything that you would like me to do a video on, I keep track of all of the questions or um, uh, recommendations for videos <laughs> what um, that come in and I have quite the list built of uh, things that you guys want to see things that I would like to show you and so forth so always feel free to let me know what you want to watch I mean I do I'm doing this for you guys <laughs> and uh, so if, if there's something particular that you want to see then I'll just stop rambling because you kind of probably got the point by now okay anyway so I give you a few options and um, the general consensus is that you guys wanted to see um, how I clean my leaves and what I clean my leaves with and then clean my leaves. So that's what we're going to do. So I'm going to show you what I use to clean my leaves and um, yeah, and then we're just going to clean some leaves and answer some questions because you guys know how much cleaning leaves is important, right? Right. Okay. So. Uh, like I said, I'm not going to get to all of these questions. <laughs> there was a lot. I was not expecting as many as I got. Um, okay, so before we get started, um, I'll show you how I, what I put together to, to clean my leaves with. So I have two little containers of filtered water here. Hopefully you could see these well enough. Maybe I'll move back a little. There. I'm feeling very far away from you. Okay, now normally um, I am missing one ingredient that I normally use, but it's not a crazy big deal anyways. So I use lemon juice. This is amazing for um, keeping your leaves shiny uh, and getting the water spots off. So that's what I use. I don't use a ton of it. Um, I'll show you how much I put in. Um, I do use dish soap. For all of you dish soap haters, um, my plants are thriving. 
Um, and I know, like I always say, everybody has different schools of thought. Um, I'm never going to tell you that you're doing something wrong and say so you shouldn't do it that way. So it really irritates me a lot actually when I see posts or comments of things like, you know, telling other people they're doing it wrong. You know what? It's fine to say, oh, this is how I do it, but I know everybody else doesn't do it that way. It's entirely different saying something like that than it is like, oh, you can't do that that way. It's going to do this or whatever. As much as I do appreciate all those things, I think it's more in the way that you say things to people. So just be mindful of that when you're trying to give somebody plant advice. Um, you know, number one, try to offer it only when it's asked. And uh, number two, how you phrase it is so, so important. Okay, no more TED Talk. Anyway, so yes, I use dish soap. Um, now, normally I would use rubbing alcohol, but for some reason I had a moment and I don't have any. So I did get this little teeny jar from this uh, plant shop that I ordered a plant from earlier this spring. And um, it is actually neem oil and coconut oil. Uh, so I am going to try this and uh, we'll just, we'll just see how it goes. Okay. So this one I don't want to touch because this one's just plain water. This is for rinsing the leaves afterwards. So I'm not going to put anything into that. So we'll set that aside. Okay. So I have this little container. I don't know how big this container is. Just over a third full, I, th I would say. So I'm going to take my lemon juice. And I'm just going to pour, it's probably about a cap full. I would say that's probably good. We'll set that over there and then take my dish soap and I'm just going to put like a couple little drops in. You don't need a whole lot at all. And then uh, this stuff I've never used before, so I don't know. This is, I'm winging this if I can get the lid off. Okay, so it's in a little dropper and it's a tiny little container. So I'm only gonna use about three drops. One, two, three. And we'll see how that goes. It may not be enough, but um, it's all I'm willing to use right now when I don't know what a product is. Okay, now we're gonna go ahead and stir that up. Um, you're not using a ton of dish soap. You're just using a few drops. And yes, if you use too much dish soap or if you wash your leaves with it and then just leave the soap sit on your leaves, chances are it may cause a problem. It may cause uh, damage. So just don't do that. But it's totally fine to use dish soap. Okay. So there we go. I have my two little containers. Try not to get them mixed up. <laughs> Okay, I've got my paper towels, my little Selectasize, they're my favorite. Do you guys use Selectasize paper towel? Okay, so I think what we'll do first is we'll answer some uh, plant questions that people asked and um, then maybe we'll flip over into some more like personal questions for a little bit and then we'll flip back to some plant questions. This video is probably probably going to be a little bit long, um, but you know, all my videos are. So you get what you get and you don't get upset or you just scroll past, whatever. Anyway, I'm snarky today. Okay, so the first plant that I'm going to clean is this beautiful um, philodendron bronze, right? I think. So this is a cross between a philodendron pedatum and a philodendron um, black cardinal. And you get these gorgeous, beautiful leaves. Let me see if I can get it up closer there. Look at that. That's a new leaf that just came in. They are stunning. And then on the back of these older leaves, you can probably see it on this one a little bit better. They have like a darker. Now I, I had a blonde moment. And for those of you who are new, I'm actually a natural blonde. This is all fake. Um, and I left this in light that was way too bright for it. And um, so it's mad at me, but we're sorting it out. We have seen the error of our ways and we're fixing it. So anyway, I'll stop. Let's just get on to the questions. All right, so I just dip my cloth in here. I want it wet enough that the leaf is going to get soaked. Um, 
Okay. <sighs> Question number one. Where do you find your plants? Do you buy potted or bare root? Um, so I find my plants like all over the place. Um, lately it's been more online shopping um, than going into nurseries and stuff like that. I don't have any that are super, super close by, thank God. <laughs> Um, so most of the plants I will order online um, and it just really depends on the sellers I don't per particularly have a preference as to whether I buy potted or bare root um, whatever happens uh, the seller happens to send it in or whatever I have to happen they bleh, bleh. <laughs> God, here we go whatever the seller or nursery happens to have that plant in I don't really have a preference as to which one I prefer Although, actually, you know what, that's probably a lie. I do like getting bare root plants because um, then you don't run the risk of anything being in the soil. Um, so you don't have to worry about, you know, taking it out of its pot, getting rid of the soil that could potentially have problems and then, you know, repotting it. If you get it bare root, you just pop it into whatever you want and uh, Bob's your uncle. So uh, that is probably that for that question. Okay, so I'm almost done washing this leaf down make sure you get the fronts and backs and then I just really gently rub all the way up the petioles um, I tend to try to lean away from brand new leaves this one is still hardening off um, and it looks good there's no weirdness on it or anything like that so I'm just gonna go ahead and leave that alone I don't want to touch the the new leaves before they harden uh, so then I'm just going to set that there. I'm going to grab my second cloth in my clean water and I'm going to go back through and just um, wipe all that off. Actually, usually I'll leave that sit for a minute. So I'll leave that sit while I answer the next question. Um, okay, how do you make anthurium veins more bold? Um, I think, I don't know that you can really make them more bold. I think that it's more um, just the... Um, that particular plant yeah that particular plant I guess I don't know how else to say that um, so you'll see sometimes um, say uh, an anthurium forgetii for example you'll see some sold as um, like ones that have really bright veins and then ones that are more of a green that have more of a dull vein and it's really just how that particular plant was bred um, now I will say if you keep your anthurium in brighter light that will make the green on the anthurium like on the leaf lighter which therefore will also make the veins look less prominent um, but if you keep it in like a medium to bright light um, which is where you kind of should have your anthurium um, the the green is a nice lush uh, you know darker green color and therefore the veins will stand out more in my experience but I don't think you can really make them brighter, if that makes sense. Um, now, I could be wrong. It's possible. It's very, very possible. So if, if you know, then by all means, throw it down in the comments, let me know. But I, from everything that I know, um, it's just, it's the plant. Um, okay, moving along. What is the best way to propagate a rootless node, Gloriosum in particular? Um, that's an easy one. So plants will root better, mostly regardless of what plant it is, if it has higher humidity. So what I do is my good old trusty uh, spag bag method. Um, so you can use just a bag, you can put it in sphagnum moss in a little nursery pot and then put it in a bag. Um, but having it in that extreme high humidity situation is um, the fastest and best way that it's gonna root. And then you're gonna open that bag up like once a week, just let it air out a little bit so that you're, you're not getting sitting, standing, stagnant air. It, it does need circulation as well. Um, if you leave it in there any longer than that, you're gonna start to see like uh, rot happen uh, mold build up things like that so just always make sure that you're if you're using the spag bag method um, that you're opening them up and giving them a chance to air out, <laughs> out. 
Okay, so now I am just going back through and very carefully taking all of that water off the leaf. So this helps with the shine. It also helps get all of the extra additional um, chemicals and stuff off of there. And it prevents water spots. So if you let your leaves just dry naturally, um, they will get those water spots. Even though I am using filtered water, that doesn't always um, yeah, even though I'm using filtered water, sometimes you'll still see that spotting. So I just go through and I just gently dry them off. You just have to be really careful. Uh, make sure you're supporting the leaf underneath when you're wiping the top and vice versa. Um, okay, sorry, did I finish answering that question? Oh, yeah. Um, so that is my... Uh, always has worked for me. It has never not worked for me. So the spag bag method. Um, now I know I did get asked a question. I don't think it was on here though, but I seem to recall somebody asked me recently about, um, I think it might've been on a video, whether um, if I have, if I'm putting the bags, the plants in the bags, my propagations, what the hell am I talking about? If I'm already putting the propagation in a spag bag, sealing it up, why am I still putting it in my greenhouse? Um, a couple reasons. Does it need to be in there? Not really. However, um, it does have the shelving. It's got lighting on each one of the shelves. Um, and then the ambient humidity in there is, um, you know, so sometimes I'll, I'll run into one of my Ziploc bags that doesn't really quite seal properly, um, but it leaks slowly over time. And if you're not watching, it will, you know, lose its air at least so that humidity is still up in the greenhouse. But the biggest reason is just because I don't want a whole bunch of spag bags sitting out on my shelves in my living room. Um, so it's just the best place that I prefer to keep those. Um, but it's not in there for any other reason than light and, um, and space, really. Okay, there we go. So there is our first one. She looks pretty good. She's all nice and shiny. All right. Okay, let me go ahead and grab the next plant and we'll answer some more questions. Okay, the next plant we're going to clean is uh, one that is I've only had for three or four weeks maybe a month I don't know how long it's been time just goes um, so this is my variegated philodendron giganteum uh, you can see here that she is just unfurling her new leaf this is the leaf that was opening when I got it it is beautiful um, beautiful plant only I saw a couple spider mites on it so I've been treating it every couple days and just washing the leaves down um, and just being diligent is probably one of the best ways to get rid of pests or to keep them at bay. You're not going to get rid of them entirely, which I actually believe leads me into my next question. Um, what is your treatment for thrips? Do they ever fully go away? Um, I get asked questions about thrips a lot. Um, I was plagued by thrips last year because I talk too much and too fast. <laughs> um, so I was plagued by thrips last year and it was just devastating. So I do have a few tips and tricks about thrips and how to get rid of them. And when I say get rid of them, I don't really mean get rid of them. Honestly, um, they're, they're gonna come back time after time. I think kind of once you get them in your house, um, they will kind of go into like a, um, just to keep it plant related, almost like a dormancy where I think the eggs just like incubate for a really long time. I'm not really sure the science behind it, but I can like not bring any new plants in, have all of my plants completely clean and then a few months go by and then magically I see a thrip on a plant. Um, keep in mind, they're also really tiny, so they're, it's really easy to um, for them to hide in nooks and crannies and in the soil as well. So, um, But, as I always say, the more upkeep that you um, are able to put into your plants, the more you clean your leaves, the more observant that you are, um, 
and diligent you are, um, it's it's goes such a long way. Like I can't even stress that enough. Why am I not cleaning while I'm talking? <laughs> Squirrel. Um, anyways, I check my plants regularly and it, that is crucial especially when you have a larger plant collection and even more especially when you have plants that have maybe cost you a little bit extra money it's definitely more than worth the time spent to um you know to just check your plants more often make sure that they're they're healthy and you're cutting all the dead leaves off um, don't let any foliage uh, or you know crusted up foliage sit in the bottom of the pot. Um, it's just more of a breeding ground, like you know decaying material for plants and pests of all kinds. Um, so for thrips, um, it's dependent on where you're located. If you are located in the states, um, and I'm not sure about other countries, I can really only speak for U.S. and Canada. Um, there is uh, so if you're in the U.S. There is a product called Spinosad, and uh, or really any systemic um, is really really good for thrips. So the difference between a systemic like Spinosad and then um, like a topical solution such as like a, an insecticide is the systemic gets right down into the tissue of the plant. Um, so it gets right into the tissue of the leaves, the petioles, uh, you spray it on the soil, it gets down into the, the roots of the plants and the plant actually just sucks all of that stuff up. So that um, the, the juices inside of the plant are tainted. So your little pest comes along, nibbles on a part of your plant, does one of these and then, you know, meets a bitter end. <laughs> It's sick and twisted, but it's wonderful when you think about it, isn't it? Um, anyway, so if you're in the States, those are, uh, that is my best um, option for you. Um, the only thing that I will say with that and the reason that it is banned actually in Canada is because um, it is harmful for uh, pollinators and uh, outdoor pests so if you do use it do not use it outside be very uh, cognizant of the environment and that kind of thing and all of our our, our good um, bug friends <laughs> outdoors um, and then if you live in Canada I mean my number one tip will always be what I said to you before be diligent clean your leaves often um, especially if you detect some sort of pest on it, just kind of be on top of it. But if you live in Canada and you don't have, uh, I'll just let that sit, uh, if you don't have the ability to get your hands on a systemic um, insecticide, then um, one of the things that I've heard recently, my friend Paula heard it from, shoot, I can't remember who it was, uh, but she now swears by it and that is a product it's a spray and it's called spider ban now I am deathly afraid of spiders like no joke it's really stupid um, but spider ban I've used for years to just spray around my door frames and window frames and or kill on contact any spiders um, and it is a wonderful product it works so well and from what I understand it is an amazing um, insecticide for your plants and it doesn't actually damage the plant now I have not tried this personally um, but I do know people that absolutely swear by it the only difference there with um, the previous recommendation is that you have to repeat um, the the process of spraying it down until you know you've kind of conked out that infestation so keep that in mind but like I said the number one way is just keep your plants clean Honestly, your, the infestation can't get out of control when you're constantly wiping leaves or checking plants and making sure they're clean. Okay. Um, if you have further questions on that, please, or anything that I'm talking about, go ahead and throw it down in the comments and I will absolutely get back to you. Um, I, like I said in my previous video, I am having a harder and harder time. <gasps> Did I just break you? Did I? I heard something. I heard something, but I don't see anything. <laughs> I 
<laughs> I almost threw up. Okay. Anyway, <laughs> be gentle when you're cleaning your laser. Um, what was I talking about now? Remember what I was talking about? <laughs> Surprise! Anyway, anyway, stay on top of your plant care. Okay. Uh, let's move on to the next question. Um, do you have any advice for a newbie plant YouTuber? Um, yeah, I, I mean, I haven't really sat down and like made a list. That's actually probably something that I could do a video about. Um, so let me know if that's something that you guys want to see. I know that not all of you <laughs> would be interested in that. Uh, but if you are interested in me doing like a video about how my process went and if I could go back and give myself advice what it would be sort of idea um, then let me know and I'll, I'll be glad to do that um, but I would say as, if I had to pick like a top two tips um, I think the first one would be uh, just start just just pick up a phone or whatever and do it. Don't let uh, things like technology or having the best plants, because honestly it doesn't matter. Really what it's about is personality and that's what is going to draw people to watch your videos and that is what people are going to stay around for. Um, you know, nobody likes watching people who talk monotone and they're like, here's a plant. Peace out. You know, you know what I mean? Like, um, so you want to engage with people, keep people interested. Now that's not to say that I am a professional <laughs> plant tuber advice giver by any stretch of the imagination. Um, I have been doing YouTube um, just over a year, year, year and f four months ish. Um, but so I can only really tell you what I have done. Um, but yeah, the first thing is just start. Second thing is be yourself, um, you know, show people your true self and your true you, because if you don't, it's so hard, um, you know, when you come off with this like persona or whatever to keep up with that ongoing. And then when people see you outside of here or people that know you outside of like your YouTube, they're like, girl, that's not you. Like you're not like that in real life. What you see in my video, this is how I am like all the time. And if you talk to any of my friends and family, they will 100% tell you this is the wackedness that you get <laughs> all the time with me. So, um, so yeah, be yourself, just start, just do it. And in the beginning, don't stress yourself out with numbers. You just, you can't, you have to be consistent. Keep putting the videos out, uh, keep pushing yourself. Um, and it will come over time uh, without going into too much detail because I know not everybody's interested in that but like I said if you want me to do like a separate video um, on that I definitely can do that for whoever might be interested okay uh, we'll answer a couple more plant questions while I dry these leaves and then I will bring out my special guest and uh, we'll answer some more questions <laughs> so next plant related question why did my tetrasperma revert back to solid, smaller leaves? Um, that could be for a few reasons, but if I had to guess, um, it would be one of the following. Uh, so the first uh, thing it could be is, um, so they did put in that comment that it's, it's in good light and whatnot. So taking out the light out of the situation, I have two things that it could potentially be. Um, so you know who you are <laughs> uh, let me know if this is the case um, but it could be the fact that uh, is it on a moss pole uh, tetraspermas like to climb on something um, as with a lot of plants that do like to climb when you give them a moss pole it kind of creates that environment that they um, are used to and that they enjoy um, like pothos like monstera, like philodendrons. Um, you tend to get bigger leaves when the plant's allowed to naturally do what it would do in the wild. 
Um, so allow your plant to climb, you'll get bigger leaves. Uh, the other thing is fertilizing as well. Um, I have experienced that where it was putting out smaller leaves, it turns out I wasn't quite giving it enough fertilizer. Um, and since I have, I have had amazing results, larger leaves and so forth. So um, let me know if uh, any of those things are the case for you who, <laughs> who asked me that question. And um, that's my best guess if you're taking light out of the equation. Um, okay, I got one more leaf to dry. What is the slowest growing plant you've ever owned? Okay, well, cacti and succulents are probably the slowest growing, but if we take cacti and succulents out of the equation, I would 150% say that has been um, my, um, my king anthurium. Now, I have to kind of like preface this by saying that the reason that I think it might have been growing all wonky was because it uh, had root rot <laughs> uh, and I almost lost it all together. There's one more leaf. They just never end. What's going on? Um, anyways, uh, so if I looked around my collection, I'm sure there's ones that grow much slower. Um, my two ficus plants grow quite slowly. It just depends on the, the species. So it probably would be easier to say like, what's your slowest growing philodendron or what's your slowest growing monstera sort of thing. That would probably be a lot shorter of a list. Okay, <laughs> so let's go ahead and uh, I'm gonna go ahead and holler for my special guest. Oh, special guest! Okay, look who it is. Everybody give a round of applause for my handsome fiance Jordan who hasn't been on the channel in I don't even know how long. I think Christmas. When we did that live Q&A around Christmas. Maybe. I don't remember. Dang. It's been a while. I have no idea. It's been a while. Oh, you did pop your head on, on a, a Hoya video, but I think that was like early in the year. Anyways, yeah. for those who haven't been around since last year, this is my fiance Jordan who I talk about all the time and um, I'm sure some of you were beginning to think that I was full of shit and he didn't really exist so here he is I exist he's real <laughs> I'm a real boy <laughs> you're a real man I'm, re I'm real man <laughs> <laughs> we have some questions okay okay so um what are your zodiac signs Mine's Sagittarius. Do you know some of the traits of a Sagittarius? Do you match those traits? I have no idea. I don't read that stuff. You're not I, fun. I just have no interest <laughs> I'm just in kidding. it. <laughs> <laughs> You've never heard like like nobody's ever said to you like, oh, you're such a Sagittarius. You're like, oh, no, really? That's nobody's funny. ever said that to me. No, maybe no. it's more of a girl thing. I don't know. Maybe. Yeah. I don't think guys are as much into that. I don't see a bunch of guys like at my work and be like, oh, you're such a Sagittarius. <laughs> Everybody stop. <laughs> I don't know. I know some people are into it. I yeah. I know some of the traits of, of my, so I am a Gemini and there are some traits that are probably like spot on. Yeah, I've heard that with some people. Um, and there are some that are like, really? And then there are some that are probably true, but I'm in complete denial. I don't know. I'd have, to, <laughs> I'd have to read up on what they are again. I've read them before. Yeah. But, I mean, that was so long ago. But yeah, we're not like diehard, like, astro ast astrological... Astro yeah. We don't follow astrological that. Astrological <laughs> science. Yeah. We're not into the whole horoscope thing and no. all that. Okay. Next question. Um, how do you deal with having so many plants? You just do. <laughs> you, I mean. How do you deal with me having so many plants? Well, I have a choice. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's fair. So I, yeah. I mean, it's not horrible. I mean, I, I think it's tastefully decorated. You know, I've seen worse placements for plants and you know people's homes throughout my life but 
I mean, it's tastefully done, so it's not horrible to look at, and it's not, uh, it doesn't give you anxiety or anything like that. I mean, it's, it's kind of nice, but you do run into a space issue, which we have. So I think it comes down to you either gotta sell don't some. Don't say it. Don't you, don't you say get rid of plants. It's not sell. It's not the same. Getting rid of to me is like if you're. Okay, you pick one you want to sell. But they're not mine. <laughs> it's okay, I wouldn't have actually sold it. I'm just, oh. <laughs> I'm just curious which ones you would just be like, okay, just get rid of that. Because you're really starting to like some of the plants. I do. I do find them interesting. It's amazing how many, you know, different kinds there are. And, you know, they each have their own unique characteristics. And some of them just look the bloody same. He so. likes some of them more than others, but he will go around, especially when there's certain plants that are growing new leaves, and he'll be like, did you see the leaf on this one today? And, you know, we kind of, like, check them mm -hmm. out together. So I think as far as that goes, I wouldn't say that Jordan is, like, a plant person, per se. I'll, ne I'll never be a plant person. <laughs> I can say that with the utmost confidence. I will never, ever be a plant person, especially to the extent that you are, ever. Yeah. That's not happening. I just don't find it that interesting. I find them interesting to look at. And I find it interesting that there are so many different kinds and, you know, you see them grow and stuff like that. It's it's neat, but, I mean, I don't care to learn what you've learned about them. You know what I mean? It's just, Which you know, is fair. I try, to, I try to remember what names, what the names are and... Do you know what this uh, one is? I literally just said it when I picked it up to clean the leaves. Yeah, why well, I wasn't even listening. <laughs> Do you know what kind of plant it is? Come on, honey. Syngonium. No. Phil ah. Philodendron. No. Alocasia. Yes. That's what I was going to go with first. <laughs> Trust your gut. Oh, well, you know, the, the, the crappy <laughs> thing is my gut has never, ever been wrong. But I always go against it because I think like, no, that's not an Alcasia. Like, you don't always go against your gut. You did put a ring on it. <laughs> hey, you know, my gut didn't say, you know, you sure? <laughs> I'm kidding. No, we're going to, no, no. No sharp objects for you. Moving on. I love him, I do. <laughs> Um, what is your favorite scary movie and why? I don't think I really have one. I think I enjoy them all equally. I mean, I, I there probably some I enjoy more than others. Um, it depends on what I'm in the mood for. Sometimes I'm in the mood for, you know, your classics like the Nightmare on Elm Streets or the Friday the 13th or uh, something like that or, you know, like a zombie flick or something. I find... When, like, at this time of the year when Halloween and fall and everything's here, I'm more into, like, zombie movies and stuff like that. I guess things that would more be associated with Halloween. And then it's... Like, I don't know. It's As long as there's, like, death and destruction of some sort. <laughs> You're so you know, I'm, I'm pretty happy with it. So I do like, I do like uh, anything zombie-related. Though I feel like there's so much out there I haven't seen. I think that with okay so number one we're zombie movie fanatics we've probably seen I wouldn't even want to put a number on it like we can't even find one we haven't seen yet like if we go on like Netflix or Prime no they need to update their, <laughs> their stuff somebody needs to come out with some real good new zombie flicks mm. stat anyway we're super zombie nerds um, and we are also horror movie fans in general. So I wouldn't say that, I would say that around this time of year, and I'm going to disagree with you on something. Huh? Um, we don't normally do that actually. Um, sorry, you're notorious for making little faces behind my back. So. <laughs> See? Oh, I, I busted. To... No. Anyway, um, <laughs> no, I don't even remember what I was gonna say. Oh, we watch zombie movies like more throughout the year, but I find right now we're watching more of the Friday the Thirteenth, Halloween, yeah. and those kind of those those I watch more like at Halloween or around Halloween. There's no such thing as a bad time for a zombie movie. True. But I would prefer to watch stuff like that more 
around this year, or I feel the urge to watch stuff like that more this time of yeah. year. Yeah, or you play your your zombie games more around yeah, this time was, of year too. Yeah, I was too. just playing a zombie game. Yeah, and uh, I enjoy that. Okay, what is my favorite horror movie? I don't even know if I have one. If like if we're talking like favorite horror movie franchise. Um, I am a Friday the 13th fan. I always have been. Um, I've been watching, or he's, they've been my favorite movies since I was like 13, 12 or 13, back when I really shouldn't have been watching those. Um, but you know, you do. There, look how pretty she is. So pretty. Okay, let's answer a few more questions. Um, is your neck better? Yes, I mentioned that at the beginning. It is. I feel much better. I went to the chiropractor yesterday, and oh my goodness, <laughs> she pushed on my back in a couple of spots. Now, if you've never been to a chiropractor before, it is definitely something shocking. Um, so she lies down on your stomach, and then she actually gets behind, and then she knows where to push. But like this snapping is heard, not like that. It's like. Pop, pop, pop. Like it's crazy. Louder. Yeah, it's much louder. And uh, so I feel much better. My body feels, um, it's a little sore from all the, the pushing and prodding and stuff like that, but my range of motion is a lot better and I don't have neck or head pain. That's good. I know. And so, I've been saying you should go to the chiropractor. I, I know, but it's just a matter, like now that I'm home and, and do everything here, I like really don't like going outside. <laughs> You need to go. I know. You need to go. I'd rather just hermit. No. And hang out with my friends. No, no hermits. No. Okay. Um, other than looking after plants, what is your favorite thing to do? What is your favorite thing to do? I've been really into darts lately, so I'd say mm. it's probably my favorite thing, playing darts. Yes, he has. Very, very big darts. I haven't been out there in a while, because I have it all set up in the garage, but... I want to go there today, badly. Yeah. So I bought him a dart board because I used to love darts. I usually I used to play in a, a just a like bar league a while ago, like years and years ago. And I always had so much fun when I was playing darts. So a couple Christmases ago, I bought him a dart board because the goal was to turn our garage into like not our man cave. But just like a play, because we actually like enjoy spending time with each other and doing things together, like you know, having drinks together or playing darts together, yeah. or it's like, just like an outdoor rec room, I guess. Well, I guess it's not really outdoors, but turn the garage into a rec room. Yeah, what would be considered a man cave in most other situations, yeah. except ours, because we actually enjoy each other's company. <laughs> um, most of the time. <laughs> I'm sure there's some days you want me out of the house. Oh, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> It's true. <laughs> um, anyway, so I bought him this dartboard like forever ago, and we finally got the garage to a place where we were able to to put the dartboard up, and um, he was able to actually use it. And so now he's been out there all the time. He's getting really into darts. He's watching dart videos. He's bought all these different darts. He's really like perfecting his throw, and uh, he's actually loved that. So that's like his little time away. So that's his plants. Yeah. So basically, the passion <laughs> that you have for plants. Yeah. That's my passion for darts. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. For those of you who are really into plants, then you understand. <laughs> I guess how you feel about plants is how I feel about darts. Yeah. Um. What's your favorite part about being a YouTuber? What's your favorite part about me being a YouTuber? Um, it's still weird I, to call myself a YouTuber. Yeah, I, I don't really know. I mean, it's nice to see that you've taken something that you have a passion for. And I guess you're able to share it with the world. I guess on a platform like YouTube. This is pretty neat. I mean, it's it's still it's still weird for me. I mean, like I like to watch stuff on YouTube, but I think it's still weird to see that you know, you know, you're used to going on there and you watch it. And I don't really care much about how things were done. It's just I want to watch a video. The video is there. I go watch a video. I'm not interested in the details or the specifics of how it's created. I just want to watch it. Great, leave a like or whatever. And it's interesting to see that there's such a process that goes behind it 
so I, mean, I think it's neat to see the other side of it. And, uh, you know, I know it's something that you really enjoy. Was it the behind the scenes stuff? Eli's having a moment. The behind the scenes stuff, did you think that as much went into the, what you don't see in the 20 minute video? I figured that half, I figured there would be a lot more, but you don't really realize how long everything takes with the filming and it's not usually done in one take and you know, you have the editing, which is a massive portion of it. Then obviously as time goes on, you learn more about the editing. So you want to throw different techniques in here and there. You find out what effects work and what effects don't work. and You personalize it, but it takes a long time to do. It's a lot. I think that's probably like, if I had to pick my favorite thing and then my least favorite thing, I think my least favorite thing is the time it takes after the fact. So um, I enjoy the editing, but it is really time consuming, um, especially when you're doing a lot of editing, um, depending on the video. Um, so it, it's all that part. And then, you know, uploading and processing, like it's a whole process that I never knew existed until I started doing this. But I think my favorite thing about YouTube is the fact that I get to talk to people from absolutely everywhere. And like Jordan said, I get to share this, this crazy insane passion that I have with so many people who feel the same way I do. And I have met some of the most amazing, wonderful people through this whole process. Um, yeah, I think that's my favorite part. Yeah. Well, I will let my darling fiance get back to his zombie video game. Or do you want to answer more questions? We answer more questions. I gotta. I want to go to the LCBO. He needs. Eventually. He needs a bevy. <laughs> no, I, I don't need a bevy. He would like I, a bevy. It's his day I, off. I'm on my days off, so I would. I haven't had a beer in. Oh, I don't know. I think three days. No, it's been longer than that. Your mom was here the other day. It's been like three days. Are you going into withdrawal? Do I need to cut you off? It's been three days, and I would like a beer. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Make me sound like an alcoholic. I'm not, he's not an alcoholic, I promise. I buy them at six packs at a time, usually. I can't remember the last time I bought a two for. Uh, probably was, the last time, like when I was drinking more. I don't drink much at all anymore. It was a long time. Because, yeah, it's usually just me drinking beer. Yeah. So I don't buy even 12s. So I'll buy a six pack, and that'll do for whatever. And if I... I'm gonna have a night of playing darts, so I'll probably usually buy two of them. But. Oh, I didn't even answer that question, other than looking after plants, what's your favorite thing to do? And I said, what's your favorite thing to do? And you said darts, but I didn't answer the question. No, probably do that. <laughs> uh, what do I do other than plants? I mean, that takes up a large majority uh, between plant care and maintenance and YouTube. There's not really a whole lot of time for anything else, right? Like that's what I do. I, I take care of my family. I keep my house, you know, in in semi non disarray, and then I, I this is what I do. It's just that time consuming. It, it is really that time consuming. Although there are other things that I enjoy doing. I love reading. I haven't been able to sit down and read a book, but I do have quite a large um, book collection. Um, in the winter, I like to crochet but I am notorious for starting projects and never finishing them. I have like literally bags of started crocheting projects of this and that, and then I can never find the pattern and never finish them, so. So maybe take a couple hours a night to do one or the other, read or crochet. I really should, I really should. Um, other than that, I, I like um, doing crafty type things, but again, I don't get a whole lot of time to do that either. Um, I enjoy like, painting. I really like doing like house projects. Because you're gonna, I, I would think, or I would anyway, I end up burning out to say, you know what, like I'm getting sick of this now. Yeah, because you definitely need to take, you take some time. You can't let it consume all your time. You have to split it up into, you know, like you said, like the reading the books or crocheting or finding a little DIY project or yeah. something that you want to do. If, you know, it, that could be plant related, the DIY project, but it gets you away from Plants. Watering and, and fertilizing and cleaning the plants and videotaping the plants. It's just, you know, pull yourself away from it a little bit. You don't want to get sick of this because you put so much 
time and effort so into it. So much time. Like, it really yeah. sucked to wake up one day and you just go, you know what? I'm sick of it. Yeah, like I know that does happen to some people is, you know, they they get collecting plants and it becomes this obsession and you collect all these plants and then some people are like, you know what? I'm over it. And that's totally fine. It happens. A lot of people get into hobbies and then don't end up sticking with them. Um, most people, <laughs> I yeah. would say, you know, they find a new hobby and something interesting that keeps your attention for a few months and then it kind of falls by the wayside. Um, with me, I don't think this plant thing's going to go away anytime soon. No, and if it doesn't, I mean, it'd be better if it didn't. But, I mean, you don't want it to be that's it. Yeah. It's just wake up in the morning, coffee, clean up a little bit, and then plants. plants. Like, find... I watch Netflix. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's not really a hobby. But that's no, like my wine down probably at some, night. something we, yeah, like if, if it's at night, it's fine. It's, but I mean, it's probably not something we should spend a, a great deal of no. time doing. No, When you hear things like sitting is a new smoking, you know what I mean? Yes, which is something that is really, that I've really been struggling with since I've been home. Like I'm the type of person that gets up in the morning and then like power cleans the kitchen. Literally, I do that every morning. Um, it's just my thing. Whereas Jordan's kind of the wake up, have a coffee, you know get woken up and then do things so he's trying to do that and I'm like running around cleaning things so <laughs> it's 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 interesting because then I, I don't mean to but then he inadvertently feels badly because he's sitting and I'm cleaning and it's a whole thing anyway I don't I'm know usually how... just standing yeah I usually stand in the kitchen I, I very rarely go and sit down with a coffee I usually stand up true Wow, I'm like super chatty today. That's all right. Well, I'm probably going to edit a lot of this. <laughs> well, let's continue with a couple more questions here. Okay. Uh, have you found a new job yet? No. Um, I With this whole pandemic thing being so up and like nobody knows what's going on. Uh, you may or may not know. I have two children still at home. I have two boys that are 11 and 13. Um, and here in Ontario they are not allowed to be home by themselves until they're 16 which is crazy. even though I feel like they would probably be perfectly fine um, I it's just not something I want to risk so um, until I am sure that you know they're able to go back to school stay in school um, the numbers are rising here in Ontario again uh, yesterday we hit our all-time high uh, in while the second wave um, is coming through and so you know there are rumors of the school shutting back down they're already starting to close restaurants and stuff again it's just they send kids home if they have a headache yeah both of so. our our boys um, actually my youngest was sent home last Monday <clears throat> he was kind of like leaning on his head and his teacher had asked him like if he was okay he said he just had a bit of a headache and they called me and had us come and pick him up because a headache is a symptom of COVID-19. So I asked the principal when I spoke to her, um, I said, you know, like it's an overcast day. I'm pretty sure like a large population has a headache today. Like, and he was up late last night because it's always that Sunday, you know, they stay up a little later. They're trying to work back into their school schedules after the weekend. So usually Monday mornings are a little like ass draggy yeah. <laughs> anyways. And uh, yeah, so I said, well, if you're concerned that he may have COVID, then I should just pick up my other son as well because they live in the same house. And she's like, oh, we're not concerned that he has COVID. And I was like, but you're making me pick him up because he has a symptom of COVID. Well, we're not concerned that he has it. And I was like, oh my, like it was a whole conversation that I was like banging my head on a wall. I don't know what they're going to do in the winter time because a runny nose is another symptom that the will get board. them sent home. So yeah. when the winter time hits and we and have all this the cold kids. weather and all, yeah, all the kids <laughs> are coming to school with runny noses. You're just going to send classrooms of kids home because of a runny nose oh we know we're not worried about it being covid it's probably just the weather but it's like, it's i get they're trying struggle. to keep everybody safe yeah like we're not like those people that are like oh my god it's a conspiracy no it's, like i i get it's a real thing I but get they're trying to keep people safe but you kind of get to a point you go okay it's it's getting really bloody ridiculous now because you know we can't just drop what we're doing and come pick him up because oh he's got a runny nose oh you gotta come if down. i was working 
like full time, I couldn't just come and get my kid when they had a headache or a runny nose. You know what I mean? And then you have to you have to keep them home for two days after they're sent home for something like that. Um, and then I was like, well, okay, I guess I'll just keep them home. And she says to me, well, you can um, you can just take them into the doctor and then they can get like a note or whatever saying it's just like a, a headache. And I was like, are you? Are you serious? I'm not going, number one, putting ourselves at risk going into a place where there's probably the most germs than there is anywhere else, in a waiting room, a doctor's office, or emergency clinic. Number two, I'm not gumming up a, a clinic or a doctor's office just to be like, I know this is a headache, can you just write a note saying it's not actually But can COVID? they even do that though? Because the, doc the doctor's not going to know what you're I don't even know. For. I don't even know. Was, the whole thing was just ridiculous. They need to find a better system. I don't know what. So I'm not knocking them because it was the school board that put all those into place, but it's really obnoxious. Anywho. Moving on. <laughs> I am so chatty today. We should have just done a live. I could have talked for three hours. We're not even drinking. I know. <laughs> um... Okay, well that was so nice for Jordan to join us. Uh, this video is probably gonna be a little bit long. Um, it's gonna take me a while to edit. <laughs> anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and just cut this video off because I have talked way too much, just bit my lip. <laughs> oh! Is that funny? <laughs> yeah. That's funny, and now you're over there laughing, you bastard. Yeah. Um, <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Uh, thank you guys so much again for submitting all of your questions. I will probably do a part two to this Q&A because there are some really, really great questions on here that I wasn't able to get to that I would like to get to. Um, and thank you also for liking and watching and commenting and subscribing. If you haven't subscribed already, please consider doing so. It is a huge help to my channel and I really do appreciate it. Also, watch this Friday for a super exciting, spooky, scary collab. I have teamed up with an amazing, <clears throat> I don't even wanna say who it is yet. I'm still like not wanting to spill all the beans. Um, but I teamed up with some really amazing people and together we have created what I hope will be um, something really enjoyable to watch. Uh, so if you like, getting a little scared, if you like spooky stories, if you like creepy things, um, then please make sure that you tune in on Friday at noon and that is when my video will premiere. So I'm actually going to make it a premiere so I will be there chatting with you guys while we watch it together. Um, and yeah, I thought that would be fun. So that comes out on Friday, um, October 30th. I hope you enjoy it so much. I'm really looking forward to it. I got the first part of it back and it is so, so awesome. Anyway, so go watch that when it comes out. Um, anyway, so I will wrap this up. I think I've said that like four times now. So I would like you all to have a great day, night, week, month, and year. I love you all to bitty bits and I will see you in the next video. Mwah! I thought we could just get to, you know, ask some, what? <laughs> Ivy! Stop it! Hey! Hey! Don't ignore me! Psst. Ivy! <sighs> You're evil. Stop. Why do I get hiccups every time I film? Seriously, every time. Is it, can it focus on two faces? I guess not. <laughs> That's going in the uh, paper really at the end. Because boy, did I screw up a whole lot of normal words. Oh. And you're gonna make sure, you're gonna wanna, what? Oh my God. <laughs>